Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christy from Van On Company. It's Thursday, March 9th. I'm going to go over the markets with you for the day. We had a USDA crop report here. Um, you know, typically this report doesn't offer a whole lot of details. That was kind of the case, though it was pretty much bearish all around. You had one friendly little bit of it, and that was just uh, a shrinking wheat number that um, people weren't expecting to see, but it was barely different than last month. So I don't even know if you can call it friendly. Otherwise, it was pretty much bearish. World numbers were they're the most negative there as they grew quite a bit. Um, the expectations were for them all to grow for corn, beans, and wheat, but they did uh, really increase more than they were expecting. Uh, so you had big carryouts here in the world numbers, and then USDA left corn domestic carry out unchanged uh, you were expecting a slight decrease but nothing too major so really that came in close to expectations uh, the biggest surprise domestically would be that usda chose to increase carry out levels here for soybeans so they took it from 420 to 435 million bushel carry out that's a 15 million bushel increase really not that big of a deal but the market was actually expecting a decrease uh, and so that's where you caught the market a little bit on the off guard side um, what it came on was the heels of a uh, decrease in export totals. Um, they really just think with the growing, growing conditions and production estimates coming out of South America, especially Brazil, that they think that demand's going to shift over there and not follow through here in, into the summer mark which is typical. Uh, we didn't see that last year because um, you had some crop problems here in South America, but everything's panning off to look really great in South America. Um, we still need some more time here in Argentina, but nothing looks threatening on the radar. So what you're seeing here is corn anywhere from about four to six cents lower, bean market anywhere from nine to 16 cents lower, wheat market Minneapolis up just slightly, uh, but both Kansas City and Chicago down about three to five cents as well. Um, so some pressure and you're starting to get to the support levels here. And if you stay range bound, which, you know, these markets really don't have any new information, uh, they should be into that range here. And you're starting to get towards that bottom end of the range over into the meat markets, friendly cash trade on live cattle, feeder cattle. So live cattle up about 75 cents to a buck feeders up over a buck, uh, lean hogs slightly lower. And then the outside markets all in the red crude actually down a buck 40 after being three bucks lower here yesterday, heating oil down three and a half cents after being six to seven cents lower. Lower. So really, if you're looking for some cash fuel needs, might want to look into that, see where that is to see if that's come down with those future markets. Uh, US dollar slightly lower and then Dow also slightly lower as well. Um, Overall, what you're just going to be watching is really to keep these markets supported in grain markets, we're going to need funds to continue to want to buy. And we'll see tomorrow how they readjusted their positions. It's been a weaker tone since last Wednesday. Uh, so when we see the markets tomorrow to see what they did, that'll give us some indication whether they're stepping away from this market or if we can see them come back in. But we do need those to support this market. Otherwise, fundamentally, there's just not a lot on the radar could, that could be extremely friendly towards these grain markets. So we have to buy some time there. I do have to close with a disclaimer. Trading in futures and options involves risk loss and may not be suitable for all producers. Have a great day.